Hi there, I'm Hoopsa. I recently went through QPR's first team squad and gave my two cents on who Marty Cifuentes should keep, sell, loan and release this summer, comparing my views with those of 500 plus QPR fans on Twitter. And between those two videos, I got a fair bit of feedback from people that they would like to hear my views on what positions we need to prioritise signings in this summer to replace those outgoing players. So today I'm going to get into exactly that, exploring which positions are a priority for us to fill before the season starts in August. Like last time, I'm not going to be getting into specific candidates to fill these positions, but I promise that is coming in future videos. And you can check out my Rangers rumour roundups if you want to stay up to date with what players we've been linked with so far. Anyway, let's get into it and if you enjoy the video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe as well. Right, so here I've mapped out our squad with our first team, and I've also included below that players that have been offered a new deal, expiring contracts, players that have already gone, and those who I think we should sell or loan out. This really is to get an idea of who we've got with us next season. And laying it out like this, you can really start to see where the gaps are. And it helps us to figure out what positions we need to recruit in as a bare minimum. Based on this, at a glance, I'd say our biggest priorities in order are a new number nine, a new number one goalkeeper, a pair of wingers, a centre mid and a centre attacking mid. That's assuming, of course, that we don't lose Chair, Clark, Salter and or Powell this summer, but we'll address those as we get to them. So let's work our way forwards from the back. Both Begovic and Archer's contracts expire at the end of June, and although there has been some suggestion that Begovic may be interested in staying on longer, I think we're going to be searching for a new number one goalkeeper. There's been no word on Archer just yet, but based on the fact that we've already started to say goodbye to a number of players in the past week, including Dazelle, Drew and Kakai, I suspect we may be in conversation with him about extending his contract if the price is right. And so he may fill one of those empty slots as a backup if so. Joe Walsh of course came in for the final match of the season away at Coventry and had a very good performance, reportedly earning himself a contract extension and potentially putting himself into the conversation for number one next season. I think it might still be a little bit too early to offer him the gloves permanently, but I do think he will be our number two next season. There is of course also Murphy Mahoney who impressed on loan at Swindon until his hamstring injury put him out for the rest of the season in December. His contract's also up, we haven't really heard any word about him, though I imagine if he does stay, he would probably end up going out on loan again. So clearly here, the priority is a new number one goalkeeper. Marty obviously likes his possessional system, so he's gonna want a keeper that is good with the ball at his feet, can soak up that pressure, and I suspect someone a little bit younger and a bit more athletic than Begovic. Now moving forwards to the back line, amazingly, I think we're all set here. Our defense was excellent since Marty's arrival, and with Dunn's optional year extension confirmed last week. All of our other first team defenders are under contract. Cannon may make a return at right back as we saw against Coventry so we've got a bit of depth there. Fox can deputise for Clark Salter or Cook at centre back as can Dunn. And over on the left hand side we of course have Powell and his deputy Lakesh. And again Fox if needed. If we make it through the summer without any losses in the back line, there's no reason why it can't be just as strong next season. But that's the question, will it remain unchanged? Rumours about Premier League interest in Clark Salsa began before the season even ended, and there's supposedly an unwritten agreement with the club that he would be allowed a Premier League move if it comes up. If it does, then we will need a new first team centre back. As I mentioned in my squad review, we do also have Powell entering the final year of his contract, and unless he wishes to extend, we may look to cash in on him this summer too. So in that case, we would need a new number one left back as well. Otherwise though, I think the back line is looking pretty settled overall. And unless we make those sales, then I think we won't really need too many defensive recruits this summer. Certainly not as a priority. Now in central midfield, it's great again that we have two settled centre mids here in Colback and Field. Colback has a year left on his deal, while Sam Field renewed his contract back in March. Dixon Bonner has also reportedly been offered a new contract, with Marty throwing him in for the final game of the season, and he's talked about the fact that he believes he can get more out of him, which I agree with. So we do have a little bit of depth there, and I imagine we'll be seeing Dixon Bonner getting a few more minutes next season. Otherwise though, this is clearly an area of the pitch where we will need some additional depth. 
Hayden was a game changer from January onwards, and there's already talk that QPR are confident about re-signing him with Newcastle supposedly willing to tear up his contract. So if he's coming back, then we are nicely stocked up in those central defensive positions. If he doesn't know, then another centre mid at least is going to be vital. Like Hayden, it needs to be someone with a strong presence in midfield, someone who not only breaks up play, but is confident in collecting the ball from the defence and distributing it further up the pitch. We really saw how much our midfield improved after the Dazelle went out on loan to Birmingham. We started winning the midfield battles and we were much more confident in possession in the middle of the park. So this is a position where our recruitment, if it's not Hayden, needs to be absolutely bang on. I imagine we'll see a couple of centre mid recruits, but at a minimum we need at least one rotational centre mid for Field and Colback. Moving into attacking midfield, we have our left and right wings. Over on the right, we of course have the departure of Chris Willock, who was our main right winger in the second half of the season. We do still have Paul Smith, but Marty liked to rotate his wingers home and away often last season, and Smith did tend to be the less favoured option. I do still think that Smith has a lot to offer, but there is no denying that he is a more impactful player coming on later in the game. So a new out and out winger on the right hand side to replace Willock is gonna be vital. And I think we're gonna need a another winger over on the other flank too. Obviously we don't know whether Chair is going to be playing for us next season for one because of his ongoing court issues and two because someone might come in with an offer. But even if he does stay I think we need another winger over on that side for depth. Taylor Richards really should have been the player to add some depth in those attacking positions but who knows if he is going to start to have a presence next year. So we're going to need some backup for Chair I think. I've mentioned a couple of times that Paul Smith is actually a more natural left winger so you could actually bring him over to that side and be that extra option for chair but then you'll of course need two new right wingers and similarly, I think we could do with another option in that number 10 role. Anderson had a good start to life at QPR with four assists and a goal in his 16 appearances since January, but he doesn't often last 90 minutes. And if he's injured, we don't really have a number 10. I think he will go up another level next season once he's had that preseason, he's had that rest, but it makes me a little bit uncomfortable that he would be our only option there. Hodge was deployed in that role a few times early into his loan spell. So we will need another option there next year. And finally, up top, we have our forwards, which is without a shadow of a doubt, the biggest priority for me this summer. Somehow, Marty got us over the line with a front line that just doesn't score enough goals. And it wasn't even just the front line, even our attacking midfielders had that weird drought towards the end of the season. So resolving those issues this summer is going to be absolutely vital to us avoiding another relegation battle next season. Now you'll notice that I've put Dykes in the cell pile. He popped up with a few goals at the end of the season, but after four seasons at the club, it's time for him to move on, I think. Ideally for me, he gets a couple of goals in the Euros, we cash in on him this summer, and we reinvest into a new number nine better suited to Marty's style of play. The quality of that new striker is largely going to depend on the funds we have available. If a Barry Eze is sold by Crystal Palace this summer and we get that 20% fee, we could be investing into a striker of real quality. If he doesn't and we can't sell Dykes or we get very little money for him, we're probably not going to be bringing in a striker of a drastically different quality to him. With Frey, I personally can't see him leaving so soon after joining. So I think he'll be in the team next season and I'm hoping that he'll look way sharper after pre-season. But again, we know what type of striker he is. He's that big presence in the box. And I think realistically, knowing the sort of attractive style of play that Marcy wants, he's probably going to prefer someone a little bit pacier and someone who can link up with the wingers and link up with Anderson. Someone more in that kind of knacky wells of old kind of mould. Armstrong, meanwhile, is a very tricky one. His contract's up at the end of June, though I'd be very surprised if we're not exercising the additional year year option but what you do with him is a completely different question realistically last season should have been spent out on loan if we weren't so reliant on him and come the end of the season after that Sheffield Wednesday performance my head was in the same place this guy needs a loan out to really learn his trade and sharpen up but after spending two seasons in and around the first team, do you loan him out next season with only a year left on his contract? Unless we tie him into a longer deal this summer, then probably not. So on that basis, I think he will remain around the team. But it's a tricky one because I think he needs to be starting week in, week out in order to get the best out of him. And I don't think that's going to happen under Marty. There is also Charlie Kelman, whose deal was renewed in January, but I imagine we'll be trying to sell him to Wigan or another League One side. Young striker Alfie Lloyd has also just signed a new deal. But again, 
I imagine he'll probably be sent out on loan to get some experience under his belt. So really the priority here is a new starting number nine and a lot of factors are gonna play into how good that recruitment can be. If I'm being greedy, realistically, I'd say we probably need two strikers with Armstrong going out on loan. But knowing the club situation and knowing the multiple factors at play here, I think just one very good starting striker is the must here. So in summary, I think we have six priorities this summer. A new striker, a new number one keeper, a pair of wingers, a centre mid and another number 10. We'll definitely be signing more than six players, but these are the positions for me that we need to be prioritising and getting right in order for us to have the best chance of going up a level next season. So, who do we sign in those positions? Well, as I say, that is something that is coming on the channel soon, so make sure you're subscribed if you want to keep an eye out for those. Like I've said in my previous videos, I'm not a transfer scout, so these videos will just be me spitballing some ideas in different positions, talking about who's caught my eye, who I think might be a realistic option for QPR, and just getting the discussion going. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you have any thoughts on this video, anywhere else you think is a priority for QPR this summer, do let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers!